Assalamualaikum. I am Tala Suhail. I welcome you all to Virtual Universities program on Personality Psychology. Dear students, today is our lecture number thirty-five, and in this thirty-fifth lecture, we are talking about stimulus response theory given by Dollard and Miller. We are still talking about it. There are still some very important constructs that we'll talk about, but before covering the left-out concepts. Let us recap what we did in lecture number thirty-four. In our lecture number thirty-four, we we began talking about stimulus response theory, which we had discussed before. We talked about what is stimulus. Stimulus refers to a force, an agent, an event that is there in the environment. response refers to reaction or let's say the reply that an organism or an individual gives to a stimulus now in stimulus response theory the basic focus is on a very important concept and that is habit habit refers to a very strong connection between stimulus and response so it then means that all habits are in fact stimulus response associations stimulus response connections or stimulus re- response link agar meri aadat hai subah jaldi uthne ki or rising up early in the morning well that is a habit that refers to a strong stimulus response connection arriving at workplace earlier is another habit well that again is a strong stimulus response connection so all our habits are in fact they refer to strong stimulus response connections if i say i have a habit of uh, taking some four cups of tea every day and i am doing this for the last 10 years well this is a very strong or let's say a very cemented habit and a lot of effort will be res- will be required to resolve uh, to dissolve it to break it to modify it to change it so basically we are referring to stimulus response as a habit a connection a link between stimulus and response then ab uske baad we began talking to you about some of the core concepts of stimulus response theory jisme zikr rahega aapse number 1 the structure of personality number 2 the dynamics of personality number 3 the development of personality where we will discuss number 1 innate equipment number 2 the learning process number 3 secondary drive and the learning process number 4 higher mental processes number 5 critical stages of development number 6 the social context number 4 we'll talk about applications of the model in which unconscious processes will be discussed number 2 conflict will be discussed jisme approach conflict avoidance conflict approach approach and approach avoidance conflict will be discussed number 5 psychotherapy will be discussed research summary and evaluation dear students we are talking to you about stimulus response theory given to us by dollard and miller so let us begin with our new lecture number 35 and let us move ahead With the new concepts, you know, core concepts. We have said first of all, we have said the structure of personality. For Dollard and Miller, the structure of personality is something where habit is the key concept. 
एंड हैबिट रिफर्स टू ए वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग कनेक्शन बिटवीन स्ट्यूमुलस एंड रिस्पॉन्स यानी आपकी जितनी भी आदतें हैं ऑल योर हैबिट्स आर इन फैक्ट ए कनेक्शन बिटवीन स्ट्यूमुलस क्यू एंड अ रिस्पॉन्स और रिएक्शन दैट यू ऑफर टू दैट स्ट्यूमुलस सो फॉर डॉलर्ट एंड मिलर हैबिट्स आर द की कॉन्सेप्ट इन पर्सनैलिटी स्ट्रक्चर उसके बाद एक और इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट पर्सनैलिटी में है लर्निंग का नाउ लर्निंग रिफर्स टू वी से लर्निंग हैज टेकन प्लेस वेन देर इज अ गुड कनेक्शन अ स्ट्रॉन्ग बॉन्ड बिटवीन ए स्ट्यूमुलस एंड अ रिस्पॉन्स जब एक स्ट्यूमुलस और रिस्पॉन्स के दरमियान कनेक्शन लिंक एसोसिएशन बन जाए वी से दैट लर्निंग हैज टेकन प्लेस बट फॉर अ बिहेवियर टू बी लर्न फोर थिंग्स मस्ट हैपन नंबर वन देर शुड बी अ ड्राइव दैट इज वन मस्ट वॉन्ट समथिंग टू हैपन नंबर टू वन मस्ट नोटिस दैट समथिंग इज हैपनिंग दैट इज क्यू शुड बी देर नंबर थ्री वन शुड डू समथिंग दैट इज रिस्पॉन्ड टू इट शो रिएक्शन टू इट एंड नंबर फोर get something when the behavior is performed that is be rewarded so pehli cheez hai drive should be there number 2 stimulus should be there number 3 a response should be offered to that stimulus and whatever behavior has taken place that should be rewarded so if these four things happen we say that learning has taken place or a strong connection has been established between stimulus and response second important concept the dynamics of personality now for dollert and miller motives are very important and a detailed discussion related to motives and how they work has is been given in their theory now basically there are primary motives all our basic motives primary motives are the basic drives such as hunger thirst sleep rest so these are all the primary motives basic drives that are there within an organism within an individual number 2 there are secondary drives or there are acquired motives dollard and miller say that it is not the primary motives which are more important it is the secondary drives or the acquired motives like affiliation achievement desire to please other which are more important now it is these acquired motives which somehow compel us or push an organism towards action so for dollard and miller it's not your primary motives not your basic drives which are pushing you forward it's not hunger thirst rest which is motivating your behavior or which is the motivating agent within your personality but it is the acquired motives the secondary drives that is when we are anxious there's anxiety when there's shame when there is desire to please others these acquired motives push us or they impel us towards action for example maine kaha anxiety is there now if anxiety is going to be there it this anxiety will push the student to study study hard for the exam if anxiety is going to be there in the student to work hard on his presentation this will push him towards improving his performance so it is the acquired motives the secondary drives which impel which push our behavior or which are the motivating agents in our personality janab a mother's smile it it serves as a secondary reward for the baby so this secondary reward provides pleasure to the baby 
and while the mother is cleaning the baby feeding the baby taking care of the baby and smiling this smile actually is a secondary reinforcement for the baby and this secondary reinforcement helps to provide comfort and pleasure to the baby so secondary drives are important they impel our behavior they push our behavior and number 2 there are certain secondary rewards which also reinforce our behavior for example a mother's smile is a reward that reinforces certain behavior in the baby so basically for dollard and miller it's not the primary drives it is the secondary or the acquired drives which are important third important thing the development of personality now as an infant develops into an adult mature individual he passes through some very important developmental stages wo kaun si hain let's talk about them the development of personality the transformation of the simple infant into the complex adult is elaborated by dollard and miller into a series of steps number 1 innate equipment number 2 the learning process number 3 secondary drive and the learning process number 4 higher mental processes number 5 the social context number 6 the critical stages of development so dear students we are talking about the important development of personality and we say that as a child develops through different stages he matures and becomes an adult or is discussion mein we have to talk about six things number 1 innate equipment number 2 learning process number 3 secondary drive number 4 higher mental processes number 5 the social context and number 6 critical stages of development janab ye 6 ke 6 components jo hain they are equally important in the development of an infant so it's the innate equipment it's the learning process it's the social context it's higher mental processes well all of these things contribute in an infant's development into an adult so sabse pehli cheez hai innate equipment the transformation of the simple infant into complex adult is a matter of little interest to some theorists but this process is elaborated by dollard and miller we shall present a brief consideration of the innate equipment of the infant first the baby has specific reflexes which are responses to specific stimuli example if some dust particle gets in the nose the baby would sneeze if some dust particle gets in the eye it will begin to have tears a stimulus response situation second the baby has a number of innate hierarchies of responses which are tendencies for certain responses to occur in particular stimulus situation example baby is hungry it would cry wet or dirty it would cry again a stimulus response situation dear students we are talking to you about development of personality aur usme aap se baat kar rahe hain innate equipment ki aur humne usme kaha hai innate equipment mein sabse pehli cheez hai simple reflexes now reflexes refer to individuals response to a stimulus for example if a dust particle enters the eye the eye begins to water if a dust particle enters the nose the baby is going to sneeze so reflex action refers to simple stimulus response situation number 2 there is also an innate hierarchies within the baby these innate or inborn hierarchies refer to again simple stimulus response connection for example if the baby is hungry 
it will cry if it's dirty and wet it's going to cry so an innate tendency an innate need and a response so again there is a stimulus response connection third the baby possesses a set of primary drives which are linked to physiological processes example all primary motives are physiological processes number 4 the extinction and elimination of existing associations between stimuli and responses example such as habits number 3 we are talking about the inner equipment jisme humne pehle kaha reflexes dusre humne ka inner hierarchy third is that there is a set of primary motives or biological drives or physiological drives are there so again there is a stimulus response connection fourth now as a, as an infant develops this stimulus response connection is becoming stronger so we say habits are developing but then some of the habits have to be eliminated they have to be uh, modified for example an individual has an habit of eating sweet after every meal somebody loves ice cream somebody goes for kheer so an individual is in habit of eating something sweet after every meal but this individual this has become a habit now this habit is a sign of bad health for the individual if he discovers that he has diabetes or he has to give up eating sweet so this habit of eating sweet after every meal has to be eliminated has to be modified to janab is inner equipment mein aap se baat rahi sabse pehle reflex kya hai again a stimulus response connection then we talked about inner tendencies again a stimulus response connection third we talked about biological drives or physiological drives again a stimulus response connection now at number 4 this strong habit or stimulus response connection has to be broken down has to be modified so individual changes some of the habits or some of the connections between stimulus and response are broken so that is as far as innate equipment is concerned number 2 the learning process what is learning according to this theory in the simplest it is the study of circumstances under which a response and a stimulus q become connected when learning is completed the sr are bound together so the appearance of stimulus q evokes the response in order to learn one must want something that is a drive number 2 notice something q stimulus number 3 do something response and number 4 get something that is reward the order of probability of response when the situation is first presented is referred to as initial hierarchy of responses after experience and learning have influenced the individual's behavior in this situation the derived order of response is labeled as resultant hierarchy dear students we are talking to you about the learning process aur humne aap se usme kaha ki learning kya hai learning refers to stimulus response connection and this stimulus response connection has got four steps number 1 one, one should want something drive should be there one should notice something that is q or stimulus should be there one should do something that is show a response or a reaction and number 4 one should get something that is a reward should be there janab aapke andar kisi bhi cheez ki jab whenever there is a drive well the initial pattern is labeled as the initial hierarchy of the drive but once this stimulus response connection is established we say that, that now it has become a resultant hierarchy so every time there is a stimulus 
you respond to it in a way first it's labeled as initial hierarchy and once this tumulus response connection is established is made stronger we say now it is a resultant hierarchy to pehli dafa jab aap aapne ye kaha ke mujhe jaldi uthne ki aadat hai ek aad din mein jab aap ek hafte ke pehle ek do din jab aap jaldi uthe that would be initial hierarchy but once for whole of the year if you are getting up early that is a resultant hierarchy dear students we are talking to you about uh, development of personality and the third stage in this development of personality is secondary drive and the learning process we have already seen that the infant is born with a limited range of primary drives that develop into a complex system of secondary drives with growth and experience strong stimuli such as shock may elicit intense internal responses which in turn produce still further internal stimuli and these internal stimuli act as cues to guide or serve as drive that activates the organism and keeps the person active until some other process such as fatigue intervenes the overt responses that result are the ones that are learned these learned internal responses then automatically set of drives stimuli a secondary drive has been established and will motivate the organism to new learning that leads to reinforcement just as primary drives will janab baat aap se ho rahi hai सेकेंडरी ड्राइव्स की हमने कहा कि इन्फेंट के अंदर देर इज अट ऑफ प्राइमरी ड्राइव एंड दिस प्राइमरी ड्राइव लीड टू सेकेंडरी ड्राइव एंड वंस दीज सेकेंडरी ड्राइव है कनेक्शन बिटवीन स्ट्यूमुलस एंड रिस्पॉन्स हैज बीन कनेक्टेड वी से दैट नाउ द इंडिविजुअल हैज अक्वायर्ड सेकेंडरी सेट ऑफ ड्राइव और प्राइमरी सेट ऑफ ड्राइव जो है this simply lead to secondary set of drives and it is secondary set of drives which motivate your behavior so actually it is the secondary set of drives affiliation love response cooperation need to uh, please others these are the ones which motivate or which push our behavior towards future number 4 higher mental processes the individuals interaction with the environment are of two varieties number 1 those that are direct and guided by a single cue or cues situation that is stimulus number 2 and those that are mediated by internal processes it is the later class of responses that is of interest here those mediated by cue producing responses one of the most important cue producing responses is labeling or naming of events and experiences the individual may generalize or transfer between two or more cue situations by identifying them as having the same label for example a person may identify two different situations as going to america or taking an examination as threatening dear students we are talking to you about higher mental processes aur humne ye kaha ke do tarah ke responses hain the individual when the individual interacts with the environment we get two varieties of responses number 1 one that are more direct and guided by the situation or by the stimulus and number 2 then there is a set of internal responses or processes that is cue producing responses and it is these cue producing responses which are very important so janab do tarah ke response jab ek organism environment ke sath interact karta hai to he responds to the stimuli number 1 in direct manner 
and number two through a set of internal processes now by responding through a set of internal processes is important and it is over here that we usually generalize events and we label them so maslan maine ye kaha ke ek individual hai wo do mukhtalif situations ke ke liye ek hi label istemal kar raha hai going to america and taking an important examination he is labeling both of these events as threatening why because of this internal processes that are guiding him to label them as threatening the ability to use language and other response produce cues is greatly influenced by culture and society in which an individual develops so theorists say that people receive an enormous amount of social training in putting words and sentences together in ways that lead to adaptive solution of problems obviously language is involved in most cue producing responses although it need not be spoken language janab dusri aham cheez isme hai aur wo that is language now language and culture plays a very important role language and culture also shape our personality ab what language you use and how that shapes your personality so on one side we have got culture and all the agents that is parents teachers books all of those things are included in it number 2 then comes language both of these two important variables they contribute equally in personality development number 5 critical stages of development dollard and miller assume that unconscious conflict learned for the most part during infancy and childhood serves as the basis for most severe emotional problems in later life they agree with psychoanalytic theorists in considering experiences of the first half dozen of years crucial determinants of adult behavior baat aap se ho rahi hai janab very important thing and that is it relates to critical stages of development well just like psychoanalysis where it is said that uh, behavior is learned in the, the actual personality and behavior of an individual is molded in the first 5 years of the life of the individual and number 2 whatever problems an individual encounters in his infancy and childhood whatever type of personality he develops in the first 5 years of his life good or bad healthy or unhealthy adjustive or non adjustive well that will be reflected in his later life dear students dollard and miller in this aspect is agreeing with psychoanalysis because psychoanalytic theory also thinks that our personality is formed and molded within the first 5 years of our life yani hamari zindagi ke jo pehle 5 saal hain usme hamari personality mold ho jati hai aur develop ho jati number 6 the social context it is important to realize that neurotic conflict is not only learned by the child but it is learned primarily as a result of conditions created by the parents this unfortunate capacity of the parent for impairing the child's development stems in part from the fact that cultural prescriptions concerning the child are contradictory or discontinuous and in part from the fact that the child during infancy is not well equipped to cope with complex learning demands even if they are consistent thus society demands that the child learn to be aggressive in some situations and submissive in other very similar situations a difficult discrimination at best worst of all this demand may be made at a time when the child does not have at its command all symbolic functions contributed by language so that such discriminations may simply overreach its learning capacity with the resultant frustration and emotional disturbance a similar set of overwhelming conditions may occur in adulthood under exceptional circumstances such as war as might be expected such conditions frequently lead to neurosis 
Dear students, we are talking about the social context. According to Dollard and Miller, neurosis is a condition which is created by the parents. Parents are responsible for creating neurosis in the child. So, according to Dollard and Miller, parents have demand the child to be aggressive and to be submissive. Now, at times they are demanding the child to be aggressive and at times they are demanding the child to be submissive while the situation is the same. So, this will create frustration and this will create emotional disturbance and this frustration, emotional disturbance and anxiety is going to develop a neurosis in the child. So, the social context is putting a pressure on the child, demanding for certain sets of behavior. So, we usually say that it is the parents, it is the society, it is the culture which is responsible for creating neurosis in the child. Number four, applications of the model. Number one, unconscious processes. We have observed that Dollard and Miller represent language as playing a crucial role in human development. In view of this, it is quite natural that those determinants of behavior that include language or are unconscious should play a key role in behavioral disturbances. The theory is quite consistent with psychoanalytic formulations in accepting unconscious factors as important determinants of behavior. However, the account offered by Dollard and Miller of origin of these unconscious processes shows little similarity to Freudian version. Number two, conflict. Conflict behavior is represented by Dollard and Miller in terms of five basic assumptions that are extensions of the principles we have already discussed. बात आपसे हो रही है जनाब एप्लीकेशंस ऑफ द मॉडल की और उसमें हमने सबसे पहले कहा अनकॉन्शियस प्रोसेसेस नाउ अनकॉन्शियस प्रोसेसेस रिफर टू ऑल दोस थिंग्स व्हिच द इंडिविजुअल इज अनअवेयर अबाउट नाउ अनकॉन्शियस रिफर्स टू बेसिकली डॉलर्ड एंड मिलर आर टॉकिंग अबाउट न्यूरोसिस डॉलर्ड एंड मिलर आर टॉकिंग अबाउट मेल एडजस्टमेंट ऑफ एन इंडिविजुअल and that is due to unconscious processes. So, they are very similar to Sigmund Freud's version of unconscious or unconscious motivation. That is, all our behaviors, all our maladjustments are the results of unconscious. So, Dollard and Miller are also creating a similarity in personality development with Freud. That is, most of our behaviors are due to unconscious. Number two, there's a there's a, a lot of emphasis on it. And Dollard and Miller are talking about conflict in reference to five important things. Paanch tarah ke conflicts ki baat karen Dollard and Miller. So let us see what do they mean by it. Number one, they assume first that the tendency to approach a goal becomes stronger the nearer the individual is to the goal and this is referred to as the gradient of approach that is reward, gift, award, receiving, that is approach. So we are talking about conflict. Now conflict refers to that there are two equally attractive options for an individual. He has to select one and give up other. Now when he chooses one and gives up the other one, he faces a conflict. For example, if a child has to choose between a toy and an ice cream, if he chooses the toy and gives up the ice cream, he is going to regret it. So he faces a conflict. For Dollard and Miller, there are five types of conflicts they are talking about. The first one is and that is called the gradient of approach or the approach conflict. Now when an individual comes closer to the goal, 
the nearer you are to your destiny the nearer you are to your goal well this is referred as gradient of approach yani mujhe koi bahut bada award milne mujhe koi bahut bada inaam milne mujhe koi bahut bada reward milne main jab us goal ke kareeb aa jaungi so that is i am facing a conflict of gradient of approach so that is the first type of conflict second they assume that the tendency to avoid a negative stimulus becomes stronger the nearer the individual is to the stimulus and this is referred to as the gradient of avoidance these assumptions can be derived primarily from the principle of stimulus generalization which we have already described example is defeat and pain is avoided Same important thing is when we are approaching a goal which we are avoiding. When we are approaching a stimulus which we don't like, well, there's a lot of avoidance, and this is referred as gradient of avoidance. मुझे कड़वी दवा पीनी हो, या मुझे टीका लगना हो. So I, this is a type of thing which I'm avoiding. So I'm going to approach this stimulus. With an avoidant behavior, so I'm going to face conflict. पहली जगह पे मैंने कहा कि मुझे कोई इनाम मिलने, तो my response to that stimulus is approach. So there's gradient of approach. Dear students, दूसरी जगह पे मैंने कहा कि the stimulus is of such a nature which I'm avoiding. I have to be injected, or I have to be bitter or very bad tasteful medicine. i am avoiding it so that is labeled as gradient of avoidance the third assumption is that the gradient of avoidance is steeper than the gradient of approach this implies that the rate at which avoidance tendencies increase with approach to the goal is greater than the rate at which approach tendencies increase under the same conditions third important assumption is that the gradient of avoidance is steeper than the gradient of approach to so, janab jo aapki gradients of avoidance hai that is more steeper that is more sharp as compared to uh, gradient of approach yani avoidance kisi stimulus ko avoid karte hue aapka jo response hai wo bada sharp hoga as compared to a response of approach number 4 it is assumed that an increase in drive associated with approach or avoidance will raise the general level of the gradient thus there will still be an increase in the strength of approach or avoidance as the goal is approached but these tendencies will now have a greater strength at each stage of approach fifth it is assumed that when there are two competing responses the stronger will occur baat aap se ho rahi hai janab conflict thi usme humne sabse pehle ka this gradients of approach this gradient of avoidance phir humne kaha ke the gradient of avoidance is more steeper than the gradient of approach chauthi cheez humne jiske upar focus kiya wo ye hai Okay, as there is an increase in the drive, there will be an increase in the approach or avoidance gradient. And number five, we are talking about that whenever there are two competing responses, it is only that the strong one will be expressed. यानी एक तरफ approach है, एक तरफ avoidance है, तो आप जिसकी तरफ जा रहे हैं that is the one that is being expressed or supported whether it's approach or whether it's avoidance one of the most important types of conflicts is concerned with opposition between approach and avoidant tendencies aroused simultaneously by the same object or situation let us say that a young man is strongly attracted to a woman and yet finds himself embarrassed and uncomfortable afraid in her presence so we say that a man a young man is attracted towards a woman but is very much embarrassed shy and timid in her presence to say anything so approach is there attraction is there and avoidance is there when individual just cannot interact with the lady 
with the attractive woman. A second type of conflict is encountered when the individual is faced with two competing avoidance responses. For example, a small boy may be afraid to climb and at the same time wish to avoid being called a coward by his playmates. Thus, the nearer he comes to one goal, the higher he climbs and the stronger the avoidance response and the more likely he will be to retreat. However, as he retreats, he comes closer to the other goal being called a coward and the second avoidance response increases while the first decreases. Thus, the individual shows vacillation turning first from one goal and then from the other. So, a little boy is afraid to climb higher mountains and number two, he is labeled as a coward. Now, if he, he avoids both of them, gradients of avoidance is in both responses. He is afraid to climb higher. Number two, he is also afraid that his classmates will label him or call him as a coward, as a bully. So, what's going to happen? If he is going to climb the mountain, the higher he is going to go, he is going to avoid it, he is, he is afraid of it. He is also afraid of being called a coward. He is also afraid of being labeled as a coward. So there is a gradient of avoidance in both. How neurosis is learned? According to stimulus response theory, neurosis or neurotic conflicts are taught by parents and learned by children. Four critical learning situations that are feeding situation, toilet training, sex education, and training to control aggression are usually mishandled by parents that developed anxiety and guilt in the child which continues in adult life. It is called the neurotic conflict. We are talking about neurotic conflict. We have all neurosis, all neurotic conflicts are taught by parents, are taught by society. Or चार ऐसे important behaviors हैं जहाँ पे parents mishandle their children and as a result of that uh, neurosis develops. First is the initial feeding situation, toilet training situation, sex education and training to control aggression. So it's the feeding situation, it's the toilet training situation, it's sex education and of course it is uh, basically related to controlling aggression. Now, in these four things, parents hui, they mishandle the child and that leads to anxiety and that leads to uh, neur neurosis, that leads to maladjustment in the child. And this maladjustment can appear at this stage, it can appear at an adult stage and it is called the neurotic conflict. Number five, psychotherapy. Dollard and Millard are concerned not only with the development of neurosis, but also with their treatment. The essence of their approach to psychotherapy is straightforward. The actual therapeutic procedures that Dollard and Miller advocate are quite traditional. Number one, the therapist should be a sympathetic, permissive listener who encourages the patient to express all his feelings and to free associate. Number two, whatever the patient's thoughts, the therapist remains non-punitive. Number three, and the therapist tries to help the patient understand these feelings and how they develop. These are all stimulus response connections that have taken place and person must understand it. Well, Dollard and Miller are talking about psychotherapy in a very traditional way. The process of psychotherapy basically consists of, number one, the therapist has to be very sympathetic, has to be very concerned, very submissive and got to be a very good listener. Number two, he got to make the subject realize that all of his... Uh, problems are basically due to stimulus response connections and he has to be non-punitive towards the client. So number one, he has to be sympathetic. 
Number two, he has to be uh, non-punitive, no need for value judgment. And number three, he got to make the patient realize that all of this stimuli, they are leading to a specific set of responses. And these are all stimulus response connections which have led to his maladjustment and he has to understand them. So again, therapy is focusing on stimulus response connections. Number six, characteristic research and research methods. Millard and Dollard has reported a considerable quantity of investigation that illustrates or tests derivations from their theoretical position in their volume social learning and imitation a number of studies on human and lower animal subjects are summarized that represent attempts to confirm predictions derived from their theory miller as we have mentioned has conducted a number of experimental studies relevant to various aspects of the theory and has prepared several extensive summaries of them. A huge cluster of studies on animals in laboratory that deal with the concept of displacement or stimulus generalization. These investigations provide experimental evidence for the operation stimulus response. Janab, Dollard and Miller ki stimulus response theory has got a huge experimental data. This huge experimental data is based on studies that were conducted on human beings and on animals. And all of these studies pinpoint to one important thing that is all our learning is the result of stimulus response connection. It is ultimately the linking up the association between stimulus and response that is responsible for all kinds of learning. Number seven, summary. Habit is the key concept in the theory by Dollard and Miller. A habit we have seen is a link of or association between stimulus cue and a response. Learned association or habits may be formed not only between external stimuli and overt responses, but between internal ones as well. Number two, thus a crucial stage in the organism's learning is the production of appropriate response. This order of preference or probability of response when the situation is first presented is referred to as the initial hierarchy of responses. And if this initial hierarchy appears to have occurred in the absence of any learning, it may be referred to as innate hierarchy of responses and after experiences and learnings have influenced the individual's behavior in this situation, the derived order of response is labeled as the resultant hierarchy. Baat aap se ho hai, janaab, summary ki. Usme humne sabse pehli baat aap se ki about habit. Dollar and Miller's stimulus response theory focuses on stimulus response association and connection. Number two, there is a very strong emphasis that initially the response pattern that is presented by an individual to a stimulus is referred as initial hierarchy of response. And if this initial hierarchy of response is unlearned, it is there in the organism by birth. It is referred as innate hierarchy of response. And once stimulus response connection has been established, once an individual learns to respond to the same stimulus with the same response, we say there is a resultant hierarchy of responses. Evaluation. Number one. This personality theory is most elegant, most economical and shows the closest link to natural science. Number two, stimulus response SR theory can accurately be labeled as a laboratory theory in contrast to other theories with which we have dealt where the role of clinical or naturalistic observation has been much more important. So as far as evaluation is concerned, it is a very economical theory. 
very close to natural science number 2 it is based on sr connection the focus is on cumulus response connection and this cumulus response relationship is being studied by using observation as a technique so dear students we have been talking to you about cumulus response theory given to us by dollard and miller baat aap se shuru ki humne sabse pehle cumulus kya hai cumulus refers to forces or agents that are there in the environment and response is the reaction that an organism shows towards a stimulus for example the sound of the doorbell or the sound of the telephone bell means that somebody is calling you or somebody is at the door and we should attend to it now every time when you are going to respond in the same manner to the same stimulus we say a strong connection a bond has been established between stimulus and response and now it has become a habit now dollard and miller have focused on stimulus response theory they are focusing on stimulus response connections and the most important concept is of habit habit refers to a strong stimulus response connection जनाब हमने आपसे कहा था कि हमारी भी कुछ सेट ऑफ हैबिट्स हैं आपकी भी कुछ सेट ऑफ हैबिट्स होंगी उनको जरा लिखे दैट विल गिव एन आइडिया टू यू अबाउट यू एज अ पर्सन देन वी वेंट थ्रू कोर कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द पर्सनैलिटी वी वेंट थ्रू द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ पर्सनैलिटी डायनेमिक्स ऑफ पर्सनैलिटी डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ पर्सनैलिटी उसके बाद जनाब हमने देखा कि कॉन्फ्लिक्ट क्या है न्यूरोसिस क्या है साइकोथेरेपी क्या है we went through the summary part with you and evaluated this theory for you dear student this has been a very uh, important theory because all our learning all the learning that takes place is the result of stimulus response connection it's the link that is there in between stimulus and response जनाब बात आपसे इस लेक्चर में रही डॉलर और मिलर के स्टूमुलस रिस्पॉन्स थेरी के बारे में डियर स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज गो थ्रू द पावर पॉइंट स्लाइड्स एंड द वर्ड डॉक्यूमेंट दैट इज अवेलेबल ऑन द वेब पेज ऑफ पर्सनैलिटी साइकोलॉजी डू राइट टू अस इफ यू हैव अ क्वेश्चन वी विल बी ग्लैड टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू दैट टेक वेरी गुड केयर ऑफ योर सेल्फ होप टू सी यू इन आर नेक्स्ट लेक्चर with some very good spirits so khuda hafiz from virtual university studio